the NRL and has uh, uh, took us out of the competition for the year 2000. I'm pretty sure I was at the club with the rest of the people at the seniors, South Seniors. And, mate, the outpouring of emotion, because there was a lot of people at the seniors club at Redfern waiting for that statement to come. And it was handed down. In true South Sydney form, there were a lot of very loud profanities. <laughs> and the NRL and News Limited were called a lot of really nasty things instantly. And everybody was shocked, shattered, and stunned that that could happen to a club like the Rabbitohs. Everybody was devastated. We were devastated to hear that and to, to all be at the club and the club be packed and for them to say the Souths weren't going to be part of the Premiership. They weren't inviting them. We really didn't think they'd do it, even though they were threatening. We didn't really think they'd do it. What the lawyers of the club were doing before I was appointed in early October 1999, the lawyers were being really fatalistic, the current lawyers, to the point where I went to my first board meeting while they were still appointed. It was that period where there were two sets of lawyers because they hadn't actually terminated me. And they, I walked into my first board meeting and they said, well, he said, got up and said, well, you don't have the money, you don't have the money to pay me. You don't have the money to fund this litigation for the next two years. I think you just put it into liquidation. And it was just dead pat silence. It's my first meeting. And I thought, oh great, I've just walked into this disaster. This is the club I venerate. And it's nothing, it's just a shell. This is it. This is the end of the club. It was unbelievable for me. And this is, this is before the decision to exclude us a week or so, or whatever it was before. I think it was two nights after that time when I gave my speech, we had the panel of lawyers who each gave their own pitch. And I remember Andrew Denton going like this. The then South lawyers basically plonked a single cardboard box on the table and said, this is all we got, we don't have a case. Which is a pretty low moment. And George goes, well, if you're right, we, to the other lawyer, he said, if you're right, we should put the jersey in the frame now, tonight. Is that what the board wants to do? No, 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 no that made that lawyer totally irrelevant. He had to step down. And they all turned to me and said, run with it. Jump forward two years later and I went into his office in Bly Street in the city and there was a, a room, just a closed off room. I think they started with one box and no case. All four walls were filled with boxes to the ceiling, which was the case. Look, honest to God, I've got to be quite serious. I hope the bastard's is rotten hell. You know, George sort of, right! They want to kick us out of the comp, you know? And he's he's unbelievable at not taking a step back, George, like the dog with a bone and will not let go. And again, I've got to say, you just got to admire him and Nolene for that. Um, but then the right people were on that board and the right people in the background, like Alan Jones, mate. Alan Jones was ringing politicians. Nick Greiner was talking to his political allies and, and other people in the other parties going, you know, these people were were digging in the background and they're heavy hitters. So we had this group behind us that were really sympathetic to South, were diehard Rabbitohs people.